Joining me now is author Joan Didion. Her new book, Political Fictions, is a collection of essays about the American political process. Need I say more? If Joan Didion is writing about American politics, it's got to be interesting, and I'm pleased to have her here on this program this evening. Welcome. Thank you. What brought about political fictions? Uh, well, a I, subject that you had not invested yourself no, in no, I American hadn't. politics. I had never looked at domestic politics right. until the 88 convention, 88 campaign. And I started looking, and I was really appalled. Yeah. <laughs> and appalled at the way it was covered or appalled at the way it, it was intrinsically? At all those, both those things. Yeah. At, appalled at the way it was intrinsically and, and appalled at the extent to which the way it was covered collaborated with yeah. the way it was intrinsically and enabled it. Uh, it was... Uh, I, I, I mean, it was astonishing to go out on a. I mean, it's, if it, it's not astonishing to any reporter because they've done it, right? Mm. But it was astonishing to me to go out on a out on a campaign, for you know, before an election, and find out that it was a series of setups. Uh, that it was very like. I mean, I had spent some time, a few weeks in the White House press room in the '80s. And it was very like that. It was that was again an astonishing experience. That was, you had a series of little events. But, but with respect to political conventions and political coverage, you had first of all you had people like, you had books like Boys on the Bus, which was a sort of chronicle of yeah. what it's like and how, how right. that takes place. Right. So why should was it so so amazing to yeah. me? Because it was still going on as if it was tabula rasa, as if the Boys on the Bus had never been written. <laughs> there it was. <laughs> yeah, I see. <laughs> Can, le can I take leave of that for a second yeah. and, and talk about the coverage of a great event that we're witnessing now? Well, uh, matter, uh, but, uh, uh, yeah. an event that is both uh, has all the elements. It has the, all the human story right here. I was surprised by the extent immediately afterwards and, um, and in that first week uh, uh, leading up to and immediately after the president's address to the nation which took place, I think, eight days after, after the event. I was, I was, first of all, it was, it was an event so great and so grave that it seemed to me that everybody would just be quiet for a while. But, er, but suddenly, suddenly it, it, it dropped right. People managed to assimilate it into their existing agendas with a rapidity which was kind of astonishing to me. Mm -hmm. And suddenly it was, suddenly it just slipped seamlessly into the, that sort of 24-7 dialogue mm. uh, with everybody uh, uh, getting on their favorite whatever they had been, whatever that agenda, their particular yeah. agenda had been before they managed to find a, a justification, a further justification for it in this event. Right. Then we so get in other words, if somebody has a point of view about the way the world works, right. this was a chance to connect it to this right. story yeah. and express and it, it one more time. <laughs> yes. Or use it as confirming evidence. Yes, yeah. Uh, then we get to the President's address, which I was watching from San Francisco, um, in a hotel room in San Francisco, and I am astonished to hear Judy Woodruff and Bill Schneider talking about it as if it was another event in the endless campaign, talking about how it played. Yeah. Um, uh, did he do what you he mean needed? You Bill Schneider, probably. Bill, Bill Schneider, right, I'm right. sorry. Did, did he do what he needed to do? Uh, uh, you know, the, did he do what he needed to do politically? As they were, I mean, it, it was, they could have been reviewing the... the Acceptance speech at a convention. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But, but what, what, how, should it, how should it be? considered the president's speech. I mean, it seems to me that because I was part of this process. Mm -hmm. But it, you did very good stuff that first week. Well, <laughs> <that> was, uh, <laughs> fell off after yeah. that. Did it? No, <laughs> no, I thank you very yeah. much. But I mean, I'm, I'm, I didn't. Uh, my point, I think, to it was to ask you what, what, sh how, how should you cover the speech? I mean, it seems to me that you, 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 you this is the most important speech recent political speech, and, and the right. political speech, I mean that in the sense that this is the world of politics. Yeah. These are politicians dealing with what they're supposed to deal with, national security, economic oh, recovery, oh, oh, and all that. Oh, so, absolutely. But what, what, we, what we, we could have talked about the substance of it as opposed to talking about how it played with the American public. Yeah. Um, um, oh, I think, I mean, I, I'm, I'm not yeah. quarreling with... with because everybody covered it differently, and, yeah. and I'm sure that, that that's true. But I mean, I think that a, a lot of what I did and what I saw was in a, some sense of saying, okay, you know, the president, this was the most important speech, and the mm -hmm. president had to speak to a variety of constituencies mm -hmm. around the world, 
you know, in the room, political, and, and America. And, and it seemed to me, he said, look, you have, this is a speech mm -hmm. I thought was rather impressive. This is, uh, you were asking these questions. And he literally, literally used this speech to answer some of the questions. Mm -hmm. You know, what happened? Who do we think is responsible? Mm -hmm. What is it we're going to do? Mm -hmm. And at the same time, touching bases that were important to say, that we, mm -hmm. we, we want you, the world, to know that we don't view this as somehow, you know, America versus, mm -hmm. you know, versus Islam. Islam. You know? yeah. mm -hmm. We don't view this, you know, as, uh, uh, as something that we cannot be responsive mm -hmm. to and mm -hmm. all of that. So mm -hmm. it should be, I would assume, even though it's a political speech, judged on the basis of, of uh, uh, some sense of what is it important for the president to do at this moment, and did he do it? Is that inappropriate? Well, I don't because that's content. I, I don't think it's I don't think it's inappropriate, but but in a sense, they were the people I'm talking about were talking about it exclusively in terms of how how it would affect his domestic ratings. Uh. Um, uh, one of them was saying that it would be a long term plus for him because uh, what had been his negative, which was what was beginning to be called the Bush economy, right. was no longer the Bush economy. It would be the Osama bin Laden economy. Yeah. Uh, now that was that right, was pretty right. disturbing. So it, was, it, it yeah. was all viewed as the political fallout. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you find? And give me a sense of, of of the sense of of all of a sudden, you're seeing a range of people, as you say, who've been asked by the networks and frequently signed up to contract by the networks, uh, and I mean a whole mm -hmm. variety of networks, to offer their expertise about these events. I mean, is that constructive? Is it not constructive? Is it what? It's kind of amazing to be away from it for a few weeks. I mean, uh, I, I happened in June to be someplace where I wasn't w watching television, and I wasn't reading the paper, and it was amazing to be away from opinion for two weeks. I came back actually very, very revived. You know? Having <laughs> thought about it more? Or Having what, I mean, thought about it more. Yeah, and, and made your own, tested yeah. your own brain as yeah. to what this means. Yes. Rather there's, than there's just simply being a, a repository of what a, other people think. A blunting effect, and also a lot of what, what 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 goes on all day, you know, and all night on 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 with this constant opinion. It is, it is the clash of it. I mean, the, the confrontation sometimes seems more important than 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 the the exploration of something. I mean, there's very little exploration. There's a good deal of confrontation. Yeah. You were writing when, in the process of writing a book about California yeah, I, when this I, attack. Yeah, I still I will go back to it. I haven't been working on it. Mm. How has this affected you? First of all, there was well, a question as to whether you would do a book tour. There was, yeah. I mean, I really thought I, I, I couldn't imagine anybody wanting to talk about anything in, this, in the wake of this. Um, and I talked to Sonny Mehta about it and... He, he being the better turn chief yeah. of Kanaf. And he thought about it and uh, said he thought that there was, that people, that it was a, that it was a good time because the people wanted to talk. People wanted to, suddenly people wanted to talk about politics, in fact. Uh, they wanted to talk about the process. They wanted to talk about it. And it, it turned out, I did go to the West Coast and it turned out to be amazingly, people were amazingly responsive uh, uh, and did come out and did want to talk. Uh, and it, it was a good trip, actually. But there was, but there is a sense, I mean, I think everybody, I don't think any writer in America uh, didn't feel the day it happened that everything they were working on or had worked on was, was in some way irrelevant. Um, um, and then, then you uh, started. That, that was not unique to writers. No, right. Um, and then you start finding um, ways, wa ways in which it just deepens your understanding of what you were doing. Or, I mean, it's it's a it's a, it's a new level. Help me understand that. Well, you know, when you're writing a book, you. You, it sometimes you you come up to a point where you can't go any further, and it it's, doesn't seem to be going anywhere. And then suddenly, you think, well, you, you take a, a week off, or you take a you take a month off, or sometimes you take a year off, and you think, and then you come back with a new level. You you are a slightly different person than you were when you put it down. Right. And you come back with this this new thing that you have assimilated, this new way of understanding the world. 
And that, we, I think on September 11th, we all suddenly got a new way of understanding yeah. the world. Are you going to write about this? No, I don't think I'll write about it. You're not going to write something for the New York? I have, no, I don't think so. I've, re book. I've read so many, so much, uh, so many words yeah. about it. Yeah. I mean, I think journalism has done well. Do you? Yeah, I think it has. Yeah, you know, I, I really do. I, mean, I, I think it's been amazingly complete. Um, um, I mean, there have been wonderful side pieces that everybody I know talks about. Like there's one in the Times on the engineering of the of the towers, right? Yeah. Um, I know, uh, I've seen a thousand pieces. Yeah. I mean, I, I just sometimes feel bad because I, I can't read all that I want to I read know, because of the press of the day. You just tear yourself. Uh, yeah. You keep thinking, if I could save this. Yeah, exactly right yeah. in the middle of a big pack. But, <laughs> yeah. You know, because you want to read it. I mean, yeah. in magazines and newspapers. I, mean, mm -hmm. I think the newspapers have just done a spectacular job, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Of, of especially the Times, which you, we see first yeah. here. Yeah, yeah. You know, in terms and it's of its the story. The, in, I mean, in term, yeah. Exactly, in yeah. terms of the depth of the coverage. Yes. You know, yeah. I mean, and, and the fact that they're sending some of, some of my favorite people mm -hmm. to cover the war in Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. You talk about journalists in this book, and you talk about the genuflecting at the mantle of objectivity. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that. Um, it's one of those things that everybody who gets goes to work on a paper or goes to journalism school, I worships guess. Worships at worships at. It's, it, 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 it is, ob objectivity is supposed to be what the, what the reporter is, but it has a different, it, I think that the way it was meant was that it had, it meant that you are supposed to um, maintain a critical yeah. intelligence uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. about the things you are told. It doesn't mean you are supposed to not 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 analyze the things right. you are told or put them together with what what the person told you yesterday yeah. and say well it doesn't that doesn't quite add up um, yeah. you, you in fact suggest that in some cases it is used as an excuse for sort of ex autopilot reporting excuse for for, for, for basic, incompetence yeah. or, or laziness laziness it's, it's not just laziness it's access reporting it's, it's 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 people who who whose access depend access to sources depends on their telling the story the source wants told. Yeah. Um, and if you or you lose your access. Or you lose your access. And a lot of people, it seems to me in Washington, who do political reporting, are overly reliant on their access. Do you have any heroines? Well, at different times in my life I've had different kinds of heroines. I remember um, once meeting Claire Luce and thinking uh, uh, she would enable me to get old, you know. <laughs> <laughs> because she, when she was older, oh, she oh, continued just, to write and to be active, to and she was and ambassador, she, and, she lived in and she was at the and center of politics. She, and, she, and she was beautiful. Yeah, and, yes. right, right. Yeah. Mm. Um, and then combined both sort of a creative side as well as a political side and yeah. a power side. She was yeah. both into power and art, so yeah. to speak. Yeah, Right? Yeah, she was, she, and she was, she was, she was a fascinating oh. woman. Uh, Did you know her? Well, I met her in Honolulu. She was because she was out there, and she had a list of <laughs> telephone numbers. So, I, so we just called her up one day yeah. <laughs> and went over. What was the genius of Ronald Reagan? Um, I am. The genius of Ronald Reagan was 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 was, was probably, and I don't. I I can't. I can't. I can't. Call it his genius. I, I didn't yeah, want you to quarrel yeah, with genius. Yeah. I mean, by that it could be his yeah. instinct for something. But uh, I'd, I'd say the same thing about others. But I think he had. I think. I think he had. He he had an instinct for somehow people liked him. Um, it was take you a long way in this world. Yeah, he managed to to convey a sense of being likable. For some reason, he never conveyed it to me. Uh, I mean, I thought of him as sort of that unlikable least favorite uncle who is really kind of mean if he doesn't get you know get it if he doesn't get the piece of turkey he wants um uh <laughs> yeah. or thought of wrong yeah. <laughs> yeah but but most people perceived him as a really decent good decent man and i and i think in all generally he was um, Catherine graham you liked i liked her a lot yeah mm -hmm. because she was a really I, I think it, one of her sons said about her at her funeral, uh, um, 
that she had, there was no difference between her public, between she had no public face. And this seemed to me the most acute thing about her. She was, she appeared to be very, she had no way of dealing with it, but this was very attractive to me. Uh, she had no special public way of dealing with people, which gave her, a, which made her seem vulnerable and shy. But that wasn't exactly it. It was just that there was no, no, no public face. I mean, I thought that, that was a really acute thing. Yeah. She also had, I mean, she had a strong sense of who she was as well. I mean, she, that was the truth that she didn't have a public face. But she had a strong sense, I think. She knew who she was. Mm -hmm. you know? I mean, she'd been vulnerable. She'd been. She represented to me, though. What she represented is, is that um, there is this real, this is sort of stunning potential within all of us. John and I, John and I once watched her reading. Uh, we sat across from her on a plane back from Paris. And we watched her, and she was slightly ahead of us. <laughs> and all the way across the country, all, all the way across the Atlantic, she was reading. She had the papers with her, and she took them out. And she was she was very much self-taught. And she would she would read all. She, she read the papers in such a thorough way. I've never seen anybody read the papers so thoroughly. <laughs> and then she she had special things, and uh, then she made notes. You know, I mean, uh, she was really she was still like a. Uh, a schoolgirl in a lot of ways. She was mm. very, in terms of the way she approached information yeah, processing. She was very, very. It was all. It was very attractive. Um, Joan Didion, political fictions. Uh, Joan Didion writes um, amazingly well, and uh, uh, this is about sort of an observation about politics in America and other things. And I'm always pleased to have her here. Thank you. Thank you. I, it's great to have you. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time.